Okay guys, uh, this is a video on writing task 1 for general training uh, students. You, uh, task 2 is taught in class, so you guys are either already halfway through task 2 or you've completed task 2, right? Um, but this is going to be uh, focused on task 1. And for both general training and academic IELTS, the task 1 requires you to focus a bit more on the tenses, all right? This is a grammar point. Uh, understanding different tenses is something that you will need to pay more attention to in task one because in task two, uh, most of the time you're going to use the present simple tense. But for task one, it's going to be slightly different. You are going to have to use the uh, different tenses, especially the past simple tense. Um, and perhaps a past continuous tense, but the point is um, that the tenses are very important in task one, okay? And I probably have told you a few times that in in uh, tenses are important not just in task one, but also in speaking, right? Just take note of that speaking part one and part two, you will need to use the past simple tense, the past tenses a lot, and most students uh, don't use it, so just Take note of that in speaking, part one, part two, um, and for writing task one. The past tense is normally uh, used, okay? Again, it depends on the question and depends on the context, but most of the time you're going to have to use a bit of your past tense and therefore um, it's slightly different from task two, okay? So let's get into uh, task one right now. Okay, um, for task one, this is a format uh, that you can use. Firstly, uh, let me just go through the big picture first. You have the greetings, then after that, you will have uh, the first paragraph, which we'll call just we'll call it the introduction paragraph. Okay, um, your second, your third, and your fourth paragraphs basically are going to address the bullet points. All right, um, let me show you what I mean by the bullet points. So these are questions which are. Um, past year, there are questions from Cambridge IELTS book. Um, you will actually be seeing this in uh, the Google Drive when I give you the questions to do for every week. All these questions are there, okay? But just to show you a question, for example, this will be a question, and you will firstly have um, some introduction here, and then you have three bullet points, okay? So, what I mean by the bullet points here, every question has three bullet points, called three things you want to talk about. So um, that's what I mean by three bullet points. So the second paragraph, you start with addressing the first bullet point, all right? The third paragraph, you start with addressing the second bullet point, and the fourth paragraph, you'll start with addressing the third bullet point, okay? And each of these uh, paragraphs, you should have about three to four sentences, sentences okay? So for example, this, say the, the second paragraph you're going to address the first bullet point it says explain why you want to take time off work all right so you are going to write about it you are going to write three to four sentences this is going to be the second paragraph this is going to be a third paragraph this is going to be the fourth paragraph of your letter okay so don't just spend one sentence um, writing uh, about this, explain why you want to take time off work, okay? What you need to know is this whole thing, this whole letter is, of course, obviously it's made up, all right? And when it's made up, you have the ability to make things up and you 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 are in charge of how this letter is going to go. You are in charge of the situation. Of course, the general situation is there, okay? The general situation is here. So it's not that you have a choice um, uh, as, uh, of what you're going to write about. No, it's here. But when you go to the details, that's where you are allowed to make things up. All right. So let's look at this. Explain why you want to take time off work. Now, you can just write one sentence. Okay. Uh, I want to take time off work or I want to um, take a few days off work because um, I need to relax. Full stop. Now, all right, um, there's nothing wrong with saying you need to relax, but you're only going to write one sentence. What else can you say? Okay, I'm, of course you can. That, that's the reason why I said you are in charge of how how much detail 
you want to write in this letter and the point is this you need 150 words at least okay so task two is um 250 words minimum task one is 150 words minimum if you are going to address this question or explain why you want to take time off work in one sentence that's not going to reach uh, 100 your, your essay is not going to reach your letter is not going to reach 150 words okay that's the reason why i say okay write about three to four sentences okay so if this introduction is about maybe one sentence one to two this is about one and then these are three to four three to four three to four it will you know be equivalent of maybe about 14 15 or around there 13 to 15 sentences and that is good enough most of the time to reach 150 words minimum okay so it my point here is it really depends on you um, as to how much detail you want to put in each of addressing each of the points in the question and you should make it a bit more detailed so don't just say uh, i need to take a few days off because i want to relax full stop no that's that's not going to cut it you can continue on write a bit more details uh saying um this is because uh two weeks ago i experienced a heart attack or two weeks ago i experienced a, a fall or whatever a breakdown and i visited my doctor and uh I went for the second appointment just yesterday and he told me very clearly that I need to 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 take a break from my work. All right? Now, how many sentences is that all together about at least 3 or 4? Okay? So, that is the thing I'm trying to say here. Make it long enough, make it detailed so you reach 3 to 4 sentences, okay? Now, students come back to me and with with an with a letter which is not 150 words and then I look at I I go through this exact same structure i'm teaching you right now which is how many let's look at this point how are you addressing this, this this point how many sentences have you written and then they show me one or two sentences and then of course i'll tell them the reason why you um your your letter isn't at least 150 words is because why are you writing just two sentences you should be writing as i mentioned three to four sentences um then they will say something like oh i don't know what to say to say yeah of course you you may not know what to say in the beginning because anyway this whole thing is a, is 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 creating a fake story so it is your uh, it is your choice okay i mean it is your responsibility i should say to make sure that is a lot of details okay don't just stick with a simple kind of uh, thing you can always add more details to the point you're addressing to the story at hand okay um, so then you will be able to reach that uh, three to four sentences per paragraph per point okay then you have a conclusion a concluding kind of paragraph which is about one sentence and then pretty much you will sign off okay all right all right let's get into um, the various parts now having gone through the structure of the letter let's go to um, uh, to the phrases uh, that you can use for the greetings all right um, let's just go through this orange part first it says before you start writing your letter you need to note that the question will not tell you all the information you need to write your letter use your imagination to create additional information not mentioned in the question this is especially so for the first paragraph of an informal letter for example if your letter is to a friend to invite him to an event in the first paragraph you can spend time reconnecting through mentioning something you did last week that's of course if uh, the situation is such that you met up last week it's possible that you met up last week if the situation and the question is such that oh you have not met this person for a year or more then of course you can't talk about you know last week uh, having met up last week okay so read the question carefully but uh, the point is that you will have to fill in a lot of the um, fill in a lo lot of information that you're going to make up all right uh, not just of course for informal letters but also for formal letters um, however you need also you would also need to use your imagination to add additional details when writing your formal letter as the question wouldn't describe the full situation for example if you're asked to write a letter to your landlord to introduce yourself you will need to imagine who you are if the letter is to complain about a faulty product you will need to describe what product it is and how you came to find it 
find out it's faulty. Okay, so um, fill in the information, fill in the, the missing parts because the question is not going to uh, tell you everything that you're going to write about. Okay, um, so let's go to the uh, the, the, the three, we're going to talk about three kinds of uh, letters, okay? Firstly, there's um, a formal letter, there's is what you call semi-formal letter, and in, there, there will be informal letters, okay? Now, formal and semi-formal is very much the same, right? Uh, informal uh, letters to your friends, family, relatives, etc., people you know, all right? Um, and f formal and semi-formal letters are basically people you don't really know either you have not met okay if, it's, if you really have not met uh, then it's probably more formal okay um, because in your greetings you will say dear sir or madam right because you don't know the person's name uh, it could be people you you know you have met possibly um, but of course there, there's still that formal relationship for example your maybe your university lecturer um, your, um, you know, or a neighbor that you don't really know that well, okay? Uh, so, or your landlord or something like that. I mean, there's still that formal relationship. You're not like buddy-buddy. You're not so close, all right? Uh, so when you're not so close, you don't speak in an inf informal language, basically, all right? So um, formal letters and semi-formal letters, the difference is just in a formal letter, you would not know the person's name in the semi-formal letter you know the person's name the, the the last name okay so in the greetings for formal letters dear sir or madam semi-formal dear mr mrs surname right and the difference also it comes in the signing off where uh for formal you don't know the person's name yours faithfully if you know the name yours sincerely and for both you will use the first name and the last name for yourself so again you're going to make up your name all right it doesn't have to be your true name all right but put your first name and last name for both of the these two letters and for informal you just say dear first name um, for when you sign off you could use something like best wishes best regards um, and then you just put your first name that's all you need okay so three kinds of letters these two letters are very similar as mentioned this of course is different now one s one thing that the examiner is looking for is your tone all right so if you go to the band descriptors for writing task one for seven, general training presents a clear purpose with the tone consistent and appropriate. So the tone has to be consistent. When I talk, uh, you know, when, when it talks about tone here, it's mentioning how you relate to the person. Like, well, how is your tone basically? Are you, um, if it's a friend, of course, you have a friendly tone. If it's to, um, if, if you're writing a formal or semi-formal letter, then it has to be respectful and polite. That is the tone that's expected when you write to someone that you don't really know that well. Okay, um, so when you email your friends, sometimes you joke around. Um, you you could be playful. You you could be um, you know you you could just write in a way that it's just you and you know you It's not. Uh, it wouldn't be considered rude, but if you write in too informal a way, the tone. All right, uh, then that is the wrong tone when you are writing a formal or a semi-formal letter, right? So the tone and appropriate, of course. So that is what the examiner is looking out for, right? All right, another difference is the use of contractions. In informal letters, you can use uh, contractions. For example, you can say, I didn't see whatever, okay? Whereas in these are contractions, this, okay, apostrophe here. Whereas uh, for formal and semi-formal letters, uh, you should not use contractions. You should you say something like, you should write, I did not, okay? So uh, this is the same for writing task two. You do not want to use contractions, okay? Never use that in writing task two, right? Um, yeah, so, okay. So grammar and vocabulary are also important. And this is, you know, that's still part of the criteria, lexical resource, vocabulary, and grammar. Right, uh, but of course, for task achievement here, it's really uh, the thing you have to focus on is the tone. Right. Going back to this, the introduction can just be one sentence. Okay, how would you? Yeah, phrases. Let me just delete that. Here are phrases that 
uh, you would use for your introduction, whether it's formal, semi-formal, or an informal letter, okay? So this is opening your letter, basically your, your first paragraph, all right, your introduction. So uh, for formal or semi-formal, I'm right, depending on the purpose, you get straight to the point. When you're writing a formal letter, you get straight to the point because basically if you're writing to someone you don't know that well, you, uh, you they don't have time for you in a sense. to you, You're not going to catch up with them. They, they may not know you. They just want to know, okay, what is this person writing about? What is the reason for writing? Okay, of course, if it's your friend, you if, if a friend is writing to you, that's not the first thing you think about, you know. Uh, but when when you don't know a person, all right, um, you want if somebody writes to you, you want to know, uh, okay, what is this person writing to me about? There is a purpose, okay. So you get straight to the point when you write an, a, a formal or semi formal letter. So I'm writing blah blah blah, whatever it may be, okay. You can use um, these various phrases for your introduction, which is just one sentence. If it's an for the informal letter, you could base you will basically catch up, all right, um, and uh, you can you can say a lot of things. You can write a lot of things. Okay, hi, how are you? I have not seen you in a long time. Blah blah blah. Okay, whatever. Uh, same, you know, when you write an email to a friend that you have not talked to a long time, um, you can write whatever you know you write. Okay, and that is the first. Int the introduction, then the rest of these phrases, okay, other phrases to use, this, these are for the body paragraphs, these are for the bullet points, right? So in a um, writing task one question, you always have three bullet points and three or four sentences for each. You're going to uh, address each point, right? Um, using about three or four sentences. And for these bullet points, you can use these phrases here, okay? Depending on what you're using it, I mean, what depending on the purpose of, you know, what the, your whole letter is about. So if you're asking somebody to do something, if you're gonna complain about something, if you're gonna express satisfaction to make a request, etc., these are important formal phrases. Now, I put a lot of these here, okay? And you don't see many phrases here because you are familiar with how to write an informal letter because you've been using English to, when you email someone or you speak to someone. Okay, then that's the same language. But for formal, uh, if the relationship is formal, if you want your tone to be formal, then it's a bit different from the way you speak to a friend. So I've put a lot of phrases here. Okay, so you can uh, use it, use your own discretion um, and uh, choose the phrase that uh, you can, that you need to use, right? And then lastly, okay, three to four sentences each point. Then now we get to the concluding paragraph, which is just going to be another one sentence, okay? Um, here are some phrases you can use. Um, these are some of the general phrases and informal letters you can just say I look I'm looking forward to seeing you to hearing from you or whatever it may be but uh, think about what how you're going to conclude the letter uh, the formal letter uh, maybe you expect a response from them I await your prompt response um, maybe you just you know um, asking them to appreciate their time and attention to this matter okay so use some of these phrases now, one thing about a formal letter is uh, the tone is always polite. It is never rude. So even though you may feel very upset about certain certain thing or you, you want to complain, you just write it in a, as polite a manner as possible. Okay, So you're not going to use expletives or um, you know swearing or whatever it may be. You are just going to say something like, you know, if, if you... If you are not happy about something, want to complain about something, so you have some phrases here. Okay, um, it is disappointing. I'm very disappointed with whatever. Okay, so um, now one thing I want to say is that uh, you have to, as I mentioned throughout this video, that you know you have to be more creative, and if you are going to write three to four sentences 
for a point, all right, to, to expand on a point, you always have to be creative. You don't just want to write one sentence because it's really up to you. If you don't, if you don't write more than 150 words, that's a minimum word count. It means that you, you're, not, you're not being creative enough, okay? You're not making things up enough. You're just writing one or two sentences for each point, which is uh, not good enough, all right? Uh, again, that three to four sentences is a guideline. It really depends on the length of your sentence. Uh, if a sentence has, um, you know, a conjunction and two clauses, then, you know, it could function as almost like two sentences, right? Uh, same for your writing task too. When I say one main point and two or three supporting sentences, it really depends on how long each sentence is. I'm thinking about a sentence that is about 12 words or so. Okay, so if your sentence is much longer than that, then of course you will not, you know, write as many sentences, right? Okay, now we're going to go through the three letters um, that we talked about, the formal, semi-formal, and formal. And uh, just to uh, repeat myself, uh, for formal and semi-formal letters, everything is pretty much the same, except for formal letters, you don't really know the person's name, the surname. For semi-formal letters, you do know the surname of the person, okay? And then the difference would be yours faithfully versus yours sincerely. But for both, it is basically formal in terms of tone, right? So let's start with a formal letter first. Um, so this is the question. Uh, you have recently bought a piece of equipment for your kitchen, but it did not work. You phoned the shop, but no action was taken. Write a letter to the shop manager. In your letter, describe the problem with the equipment. Explain what happened when you phoned the shop. Say what you would like the manager to do, right? So because this is, you don't know the manager's name. Um, probably, you know, you phoned the shop, probably, when you phoned the shop, you probably talked to somebody else, not the manager, okay? Um, and that's why you are writing to the manager. So it's not as though you know this person already, okay? So dear sir or madam, because you don't really know this person, okay? So this is a formal letter. Um, introduction, you get straight to the point. What, what is the purpose of writing? I'm writing to express my dissatisfaction with the washing machine I bought at your store and the poor customer service I experienced a few days ago, okay? So I got this from, I'm writing to express my uh, dissatisfaction, first paragraph, I'm writing to express my, oh, it's somewhere here, to complain about something, I'm writing to express my dissatisfaction with something, okay? Um, so that's the first sentence, it's quite a long sentence, right? Then uh, get to the, the first point, three or four sentences is going to explain this, describe the problem with the equipment. Last Tuesday I bought a Prince LS777 washing machine, again this brand and this model is made up from your store. I installed it, I installed it on the same day and it was working fine for the first two days. However, on the third day I tried to use it but I would not start. Very simple. Okay, I did not just say, last Tuesday I bought a Prince LS777 washing machine from your store and I found that it did not work full stop. Now that will be too short. So I, you know, I, I fill it in with more details. I installed it. It was working fine the first two days, however on the third day, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you have to expand it. Okay, um, explain what happened when you phoned the shop. Immediately, I phoned your shop and spoke with one of your supervisors. He assured me that he would get back to me after a day or two and tell me what I could do to get my washing machine replaced. Because I did not receive any call from him, I called your shop again and was again promised a, re a return call. It has been more than three days and nobody has called. Right? So, again, I'm, you know, I'm, of course, I'm making this up. I called once, they said they'll call back, but they didn't. And uh, I called again, and then they, were, they promised another call, but they didn't, okay? So rather than just do it once, you know, maybe you could, rather than just, yeah, I just expanded this little story a bit more. Third point, say what you would like the manager to do. This has been a very disappointing experience for me. I would appreciate it. I would appreciate it if you could, Call me back at blah 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 as soon as you read this letter and let me know how I can get my machine replaced. 
right? So this, I'm actually telling this, you know, say what I would like the manager to do. Okay, conclude the concluding paragraph, I wait your prompt response, and that is yours faithfully because this is a formal letter in the sense you don't know the person's name, okay? The next letter is a semi-formal one. The only difference, as I mentioned a few times already, is the fact that you don't know this person. Uh, sorry, the fact that you know this person here as opposed to the formal letter. And then because you write this person's name, the surname, you use sincerely rather than faithfully, right? Your neighbors have recently written to you to complain about the noise from your house flat. Write a letter to your neighbors in your letter. Now, if, you're le if your neighbors complain to you, it means that your relationship is probably not that great. It's probably a neighbor, but you're not really, really close. Okay, so in that case, you can consider it a semi-formal letter. I mean, if your friend has <clears throat> issues with you, you are not going to write letters. I mean, this is not the way it normally happens, okay? Um, written to you, okay? I mean, if your friend, you're not going to write to someone to complain, right? You just talk to that person, okay? So this is a semi-formal letter. I just make make up a name all right uh, surname here dear mr and mrs jones i'm writing okay again straight to the point i'm writing to sincerely apologize for the loud noise you heard yesterday during my birthday okay this phrase is from here i'm writing to sincerely apologize for something or you could say i'm i'm um yeah i'm writing to sincerely apologize you said i would like to apologize so that's fine okay getting straight to the point uh, then explain the reasons for the noise. The reason for the noise is that I was celebrating my 40th birthday party. Um, I have not had a birthday celebration for over 15 years and therefore I planned a huge party yesterday. I invited over 50 of my friends and I guess the fun and laughter resulted in the high level of noise. Okay, so again, expand a bit. Um, uh, you know, talking about having not had a birthday celebration for 15 years, I planned a huge party and I invited 50 of my friends. Apologize, please accept my apologies for the disruption of your sleep during the night. I did not realize that the noise was heard in your flat until you mentioned it to me this morning. Uh, it was not my intention to cause so much trouble to you. Okay, so very polite. Um, way of speaking to the person that is the tone that's expected in such a letter all right and the, please accept my apologies to apologize for something please expect, accept my apologies for um and the third point describe what action you will take because of this incident i promise to refrain from holding big parties at my flat in future i will also ensure that any events held at my place will not produce so much noise then the conclusion uh, concluding paragraph, once again, I apologize for the inconvenience cost. Yours sincerely, you know the person's name, not faithfully, as before. Yours sincerely, and then your full name, first name, last name. First name, last name, but this is faithfully because this is a formal letter. You do not know the person's name, okay? Lastly, an informal letter. Um... Last month, you had a holiday overseas where you stayed with some friends. They have just sent you some photos of your holiday, write a letter to your friends. Okay, so straight away, you know, this is a informal letters about your friends. Thank them in your letter. Thank them for the photos and for the holiday. Explain why you didn't write earlier and invite them to come and stay with you. Okay, so dear Jason, John and Jack, because it's write a letter to your friends. Okay, plural. Um, of course, we don't really do that nowadays. In We don't write letters to three people because these... You, you could write emails to three people, but a letter just goes to one person. But anyway, um, that's what it says. Write a letter to your friends. Okay. How are you guys? How are you guys doing? I hope you are all doing great in your studies. Exams are coming, right? Okay. So very informal, catching up. Okay. Then first point, thank them for the photos and for the holiday. Firstly, I'd like to Thank you for the photos you sent me. I received them yesterday and it was a pleasant surprise. All the pictures also remind me of the great fun we had together, especially at the beach. Thanks so much for having me over and planning the whole trip. Okay, talk about the beach. Um, talk about, um, yeah, talk about the beach. You have to talk about the pictures because, you know, the bullet points is thank them for the photos. Okay. Um, and my my point I, the 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 thing i added here was that they planned the whole trip 
Okay, I don't think it says said here in uh, the letter uh, and in the instructions. But again, this is inputting something that you, so you can write about to expand a bit on uh, your points, right? I explained why you didn't write earlier. I'm sorry that I couldn't write to you all earlier. I just finished my final exams. As you know, this is my final year and I had to work extra hard in order to do well. My results for the first three years in college was awful. Um, my results should be, my results were awful. So I had to make up for it this year. I hope everything goes well, all right? So uh, I did not just say, I explained and I kind of elaborated, you know, it's not just about, I did not just say, oh, I'm sorry I couldn't write earlier, I had exams and I just finished it full stop. Now that'll be very short, but I said, as you know, this is my final year. And then I also put in this thing about how the results, my results were bad. Um, and therefore I had to do well in this final year, okay? Additional information. Invite them to come and stay with you. Since I'm free now and don't have to study, you realize I use all these contractions here. Okay, contractions. These are okay for um, informal letters, but not for formal letters. So since I'm free now and don't need to study, I'd like to invite you all to come over here. I think your exams will be over in a month, in one month's time, right? Let me know if you, again, I kind of like put this in, you know, oh, not just, I don't just invite them, but I say, I think your exams will be over in one month's time, right? Let me know if you're all able to visit me for a few days. You guys can stay in my guest room. Um, again, I add more information. You can stay in my guest room. I'm going to plan everything for you, right? And you conclude, I look forward to your positive response and best regards, okay? And then your um best regards okay and then just your first name you don't have to have first name and last name okay so that's it all right so this is uh these are the three letters uh the formal and the info uh, formal and the semi formal formal are very similar and then you have an informal letter you have you can use contractions in your informal letter uh, you can't use contractions in your formal or semi-formal and use the phrases for formal and semi-formal that I've given you uh, because these are phrases you don't normally use uh, but I don't I didn't give you many phrases for informal letters because you're just speaking to a friend um, as you would normally okay